world. There's an entire computer subculture hereabouts, not just children, adults, professionals and amateurs. What they are interested in, the software that's on display here, is unlocking the little key that protects it, cracking that code, getting into the system, either for sheer devilment or for making large sums of money. These are the hackers. Until now, the computer hacker has been seen affectionately as a skilled technocrat, beavering away obsessively in his den, a harmless crank exploring the international computer networks for fun. But today it's clear that any computer anywhere can be broken into and interfered with for ulterior motives. The technocrat has mutated to the technopath. And now, to kick off Area 41 2024, please welcome to the stage the Area 41 core organizer team, consisting of Philip, Tom, Adrian, Candid, and Stefan. Welcome everyone, good morning. How is everyone doing? All right. Sounds like some club mate or coffee is already in it. Um, there are still some free seats here in the front, so don't be shy. If you want the seat, there's still a few. There's also a few kind of scattered around. And for those who haven't figured out yet, you can also go upstairs and kind of watch it from there. So there's plenty of rooms, but yeah, get yourself comfortable. Hmm. So now someone already broke my clicker. Let's see. Yeah, still works. So this doesn't work. Great. I mean, that's why we have USB and Bluetooth on the batch, right? But sure. more to that later, I guess. Welcome to Area 41. It has been a while, hasn't it? It's been two years since the last Area 41. It's been eight years since we've been here in Complex for the last time. And I think we're very happy to be back. Uh, we're very happy to work with a lot of the same people again and have, you know, our little amazing light show when we like get on stage, like, you know, that little flare. So that's amazing. So yeah, a lot of stuff has, uh, has changed, um, since we did this the last time, since we did this the first time. And, um, yeah, that's you know, 14 years ago, right? So quite yeah. some time passed. And well, as you can see, we already had some nice batch there. And Adriana, I think we'll talk about that later on as well for the new one, right? Yeah. So some things do not change. We had electronic batches 14 years ago. We still do have them today. Uh, some things though are very different this time. Um, the Taylor Swift Eras Tour is pretty much the other exciting thing that happens in Zurich this year. 
And if we look at these two events, like they have individual characteristics, right? Um, they're both in Zurich this summer, that's cool. <laughs> you don't have to camp three days before the event to get into Area 41, even though we did have a queue this morning, which, you know, sorry about that, but it didn't rain. On the other side, we do have O days. Taylor doesn't, arguably. We also have lock picking upstairs, which is always, you know, something people are happy to explore. We don't have proposals at Area 41, yet. <laughs> We're open to the idea. We also don't have friendship bracelets. We do, however, have the batches, which is really kind of friendship bracelet for nerds, so, yeah, you know, close enough. But at Area 41, you can say penetration testing and nobody chuckles. We kind of failed that one, but okay. <laughs> however, the thing that they have in common is it has become a nightmare to get tickets. And I think the lucky ones that are here are the ones that probably like, you know, were fast enough to get one, but we did sell out tickets uh, very quickly. Before I dig into that, um, I want to pause here and say, if you're a Taylor Swift fan, I like Taylor Swift. This is not an offense in any way. Please do not assassinate me. Thank you. We sold 400 tickets plus in two waves in less than a minute each, I think. It was less than a minute, yeah. A lot of people were disappointed. A lot of people were sad. I get that. We can't really change it. We worked with folks here at Complex to add some more seats. So we had three, uh, 30 additional tickets that we raffled off. If you were one of the lucky folks that got one, welcome to you as well. But yeah, it was kind of tricky. And it adds a whole lot of new problems that we need to think about, right? Um, for example, we're worried, like, is there going to be a secondary market for this? Are people going to sell these batches online and sculpt them? Do we need to worry about bots? So fortunately, it seems like that's not really an issue. <sighs> Fair. That one is kind of sick, though. Like, I, I don't know what event that is, but I kind of want to have it. One thing though, and I'm sorry if you're in the audience, I did blur out the names, but I did find that though. That, that <laughs> looks vaguely familiar, yeah, I do remember. Yeah, yeah, I remember that one. I can't find mine, actually. So I actually wanted to make use of the opportunity and like, you know, get a replacement for that one. But, uh, <sighs> yeah. didn't work out, but I appreciate that, you know, you, you do not just throw these things away, that you look for, like, you know, a good new owner for those collectible items. Exactly. I mean, if you don't want your badge for whatever reason, we do recycle them so you can give it back tomorrow, but as you just learned, there might be a secondary market where you still get some money for it, so it's up to you what you decide. All right. I think that's enough, like, you know fluff for the warm-up, so let's get started. We're really, really happy to have you here today. Um, this is probably the first real Area 41 since COVID. Uh, when we did this two years ago, we did a single track event because risks were different. We were a bit more cautious about a lot of things. I think for that one, we went pretty all out, I would say. And hopefully you will see that during those two days. Uh, and hopefully you will do your part to make this an awesome event as well. Because we sold out, we also added one thing that we never did so far, and that's streaming. Track one should be streaming if bandwidth allows and you don't, you know, break things. Um, should be streaming on YouTube during both days. Track two does not. It's also called the underground track, so I think we're okay with that. Um, but generally, if your friends can't be here, they still want to see the talks, it's on a YouTube channel. Which I found out has like 1,500 subscribers now. We never look at this, but that was surprising. That's a good start. So yes, if you want to hang out at the terrace outside and watch it on your phone, be our guest. We should stream on TikTok. Get a whole new generation. Oh, don't even go there. <laughs> One other thing. How to get banned at Area 41. Um, we want to make sure this is a cool event for everyone. We want to make everybody feel welcome. And obviously, we all do our part. You all do your part for this. 
there's a couple of things that we're fairly firm about, and those are fairly universally apl applicable. Boundaries, you know, if somebody tells you to like move away from them, personal space, please move away from them. If somebody doesn't want to talk to you, talk to somebody else. If somebody doesn't want to get their picture taken, even if you were just, you know, taking a larger group picture, please don't take the picture. It's really not that hard. Just ask people like, hey, are you okay if like I take a picture? This is us avoiding a zero, like no photo policy because people like taking their like memories or whatever. But these are kind of the rules. Um, we instructed all the volunteers this year, as we did in last year, to escalate any concerns and complaints to us. And if you are being a jerk, we will kick you out. We never had to. I hope it stays that way. Thank you for helping us to keep it that way. On the other side of that, if you are feeling uncomfortable, if something happened, if you have any concerns, please approach any of us here on stage today or any volunteer in the red shirt and ask for one of us to, to come and like chat to you. We are taking these things serious. We want this to be an inclusive and comfortable event for everyone. Last but not least, this conference is highly improbable. It's extremely expensive. It takes an absurd amount of time for many, many people, most of which are not on this stage, but including the people on this stage. But yet here we are. The only reason this is possible is because the entire event is organized by volunteers. It's a solid 12 months of work, which is also the reason this doesn't happen every year, because we would pretty much start once we go home today, so that's why we stick to a two-year rhythm. Or are we sticking to a two-year rhythm? No, we'll see. Um, we have a ton of volunteers here on site. We have a ton of amazing sponsors that help us make this happen. We'll get to that in just a second. And last but not least, while it's highly confusing to us that suddenly we have a demand that so much exceeds the capacity that we have. It's always amazing to see that we have your trust into the conference that we're putting on, that we see that you want to join these events, and that helps us to get sponsors, that helps us to get these like you know events lined up. So thank you all very, very much for all of you who are here the first time, all of you can keep coming back. Candid, who pays the bills? Well, I mean, of course, all of you help us, but yes, we want to make it affordable as well. And f I think for Switzerland, 299 Swiss francs is not too bad for lunch, coffee, and there will be the barbecue with free drinks as well tonight. But of course, we are also very grateful for our sponsors. So it could not happen without the sponsors. Special thanks to our platinum sponsors, Compass Security, Fortinet and Splunk, which all have booth here, so check those out. And of course, we also have a lot of gold sponsors who help as well, so thanks also to them, like Clue, Swisscom, Kaspersky, RSA and Arrow, the Orange Cyber Defense, and InfoGuard. Well, wait, there's more. Actually, we also have Base Vision, Snake and Full Stack Yes, Cloudflare, Hack Knowledge, Post Finance, Palo Alto Networks and the Microsoft, Microsoft, nearly, the Migro Security and Risk Team. Sorry there, no pun intended. De definitely not. But all of those people are here, so please make it worth for them as well, um, because only if they could report back and say, hey, this is an event that we should support, their marketing people will tell, yes, we probably should send. We're not intending that this is where you sign the million deals. I mean, please do. That definitely helps as well. But still, of course, interact, and we'll go over that as well. But maybe back to the batch, right? Um, I think, Adrian, you definitely, um, well, spent more than one night uh, yeah. building on the deck. I mean, I do remember the old times, right? We already yeah. talked about 2010. Good, good times. The, the cool thing is we somewhat have the same as in 2010. Capacitative uh, touchpads. True, but yeah. I mean, at least 
a different display, right? Yeah, absolutely. Um, we thought we'd try out e-paper. Um, had a bit of fun, had the wrong one delivered. Um, tested them, the ones took 10 seconds and more to update. The ones we have now are way better than that. But yeah, it took a few nights. Yeah, absolutely. Um, to not spoil too much. Um, Come on, go for the Easter eggs. No, no, no. No spoiling of the Easter eggs. Um, you can change your nickname. You set one per default, but you can change it. It needs a bit of involvement. Um, Hacking, I guess. But there is a URL, so... Yeah, there's a URL. It's a very tiny QR code. It works. We didn't believe it, but it really works. So, yeah, go ahead. Try it out. There are a few Easter eggs. Have fun with the batch. And probably you are bribable to get something out of the Easter eggs, or shouldn't we mention? I mean, if you find one, you'll know. And there are some yeah. prices behind it as well, some really cool ones. So You will see when you have one. It's definitely worth, definitely worth having it. Um, and probably at that point, also, big thank you to the hands-on security, who um, put in some tremendous work as well, right? Helping soldering some of the things that messed up. So thank you. But yeah, as said, you'll figure it out. There's four buttons, well, actually five buttons, and the menu. There's a few games on it as well, so um, feel free. Maybe one slight hint, so if you get blinded by the LEDs, and at how many percent are we running the um, LEDs? Sorry. We... Um, what did I say? Two to four percent? Yeah, so, so they're on at two percent of their capacity at the moment, the LEDs, and they're still quite bright, so at the beginning, Imagine, we were blind the whole time uh, yeah. because they flash. And they reduced, they reduced, reduced, now at 2 or 4%. So, yeah. So, if it's still too much, just push the padlock that you see on the screen here as well for about one second. And then it will go into deep sleep, which means the LEDs are off. The screen stays, of course. And you just have to twinkle a little bit to wake it up again. But, yeah, let's go to kind of getting around. You obviously all found the way into the main area, which is good. Um, so. Hopefully, you kind of recognize where you are. Well, right? How would you know? Well, the ones which aren't here probably don't hear me. Well, live streaming. Ah, uh, you got me there. But if you are live streaming, this is where you should be. Um, you'll see on your left, there's the entrance down to track two, the underground track, which, yes, you means you have to go down a nicely Egyptic stairs. I think that's what they call it by now. And then you're in the lower basement, where's the uh, track two. And... On your, well, right side, you find a stairs going up. There is also a stair outside, which goes up directly to the terrace. We'll probably make use of that during the barbecue and during lunch, because lunch will be served at the back of this hall. Follow the errors, so as in, you go in on one side and you come out on your right, so that we have a nice flow and not too much people kind of blocking the buffet, uh, which is self-service buffet, but we'll help as well. So let us know if there's any issue. The toilets you find on your right, there's a kind of a small passageway going back. You'll find the toilets there. There's also a smoking area outside, so where you came in. The corridor with all the nice sponsor booths that you should check out. There is the fumoir or outside smoking is allowed as well. Not inside. As we mentioned, there is upstairs as well. So you can check out the gallery. You can go to the terrace. And there is the second sponsor area, chill out. There's a few lock pickers as well, if you want to kind of hoon in on your uh, skills there. Please, of course, check those out. And yes, we still have the back going for the nice barbecue weather. So uh, fingers crossed that we will have a nice barbecue on the terrace. If not, we will move slightly inside for the eating. Uh, so everything should be covered. There will be a bar upstairs open as well, serving you Club Mate. Till then, you find the entrance bars giving you soft drinks in the, the breaks. And of course, coffee, mate, anything else you need. And I already mentioned downstairs. Smaller, but still nice track too. Uh, so definitely a few interesting talks there as well. Check those out. No live streaming, but that's where you should have been there, right? I guess it's one of those. Who of you has been here in 2016? Cool. Um, the downstairs area looks very different than it did in 2016. I'll let you discover that, but very different. Different is better, right? Yes. At least this time it is. 
Um, we also do have swag. So uh, thanks to Philip and Tom to actually prepare all the nice swag. You will see later on that, yes, we do have some merchandise. Some you should already have received, the big cable bag and some of the kind of lanyards. We also do have a limited amount of bottles, kind of yeah, nicely engraved. We have different T-shirts. We have hoodies with hoods, without kind of fleece jackets. The booth will be on your left near the registration area. It will be open kind of afterwards. And yes, we're looking forward to do some stuff. You can go cash or by credit card if you dare. Uh, and of course, we'll happy accept anything. And probably last but not least, um, actually before we go into the challenges, I wanted to give Tom the chance as well to explain kind of why are we all dressed in red, right? Any, any takers on that? Why? I don't know. You tell me. Uh, no? So yeah, we as the staff, like we're just here to help. We have a great volunteer team again, so a big shout out already to the volunteer guys. Again, this would not happen without them, so big props and shout to them. Thank you. <laughs> and yeah, additionally, um, yeah, we're here to serve you and to help you to encourage a good and fun time. So yeah, as we said before already, if you uh, have any feedback or if you need anything, just come find us and we're here for you. I don't know if there's anything else awesome. before. No, that's perfect. Exactly. So if you have any questions, feel free to approach any one of the people in red or us directly, of course. Uh, we'll try to make it better. There is also a feedback form. If you got the agenda while walking in, there's a QR code. If you fill it out, A, it helps us tremendously to kind of improve. B, there will be a gift raffle tomorrow, so it's definitely worth. Um, but even if you don't want to put your name, we still appreciate the feedback. Um, and yes, if that's not enough, well, there are some free swags to be won, right? So different challenges. Um, there is a Kubernetes. If you want to play around, follow the link or the QR code there. Um, it's from one of the sponsors, Record. They did a tremendous job setting up a lab. But there are various other ones as well. I mean, just to mention a few, we have the Fortinet, which are upstairs. They have a nice challenge. Um, it's not too difficult. You guys should um, definitely figure it out. But it needs a few information, let's put it that way. There is, of course, also a kind of a more guest-based one from Clue Security. There's on the Rubik's Cube. You might have recognized some QR code from Compass Security. And SNCC is giving away prizes. I think you don't even have to solve much, so that's an easy one. And some of the others, um, kind of InfoGuard, and Cloudflare, they also have good swags as well. So please, of course, check them out. And I think we're kind of coming to the end. So any final words? We have a couple of minutes left. We're really quick this time. Any questions? Remarks? Chokes? I don't know. Eager to hear the talks already. It's cool. Well, I guess we'll have an early coffee break, or our keynote speaker will have a couple of extra minutes to share some awesome stuff. Um, I'll let you do the honors, Candid.